Hello and welcome all. My name is Ali Eren and I am an SAP EWM consultant here at MDP Group Logistics Team. As logis logistics team, we are going to share what we know about SAP EWM labor management and we would love to hear about your feedback at the end of the webinar today. So today we are going to be covering labor management, which is one of the most effective functionalities that is offered by SAP Extended Warehouse Management and how it can help our or your business and warehouse processes, operations and labor management uh, in that case. So before I start with the topic, I'd like to briefly introduce ourselves MDP group and specifically the logistics team as how we can be helpful or how we can cooperate with you in the future op uh, operations if that is the case. So here at MDP group we have got uh, consultants, more than 16 business consultants specialized in their own fields, having served clients from a wide range of industries on an international scale. And right now we are working uh, with more than 10 national and more than seven international companies, and we are helping them operate and optimize their warehouse processes with the solutions that are offered by SAP and MDP group itself. So we provide services in many different cases of logistics modules, including extended warehouse management, transportation management, and uh, GTS modules. Also, we offer consultancy for setup, support, and further development on embedded or decentralized systems. So when it comes to process design or automation or test design and execution, our team work really hard to make the best outcome in any process that you have uh, with offering you guys technical support and key user trainings in order to have an effective and beneficial process at the end of the day. So for all those logistics execution applications and many other, or just to share some information, you can feel free to contact us on LinkedIn or via our mail that I will be sharing at the end of the webinar. Without further ado, let's get more into detail with today's topic, which is labor management functionality. So I'd like to first start with the definition of what labor management is, and then we're going to see how extended warehouse management, the warehouse management monitor and other functionalities can help us have the best use of those labor management functionalities and features and thus how we can operate our warehouse uh, with the most important cost, including the most important cost that we have, which is the human labor. So after I present you with the technical information, I'd like to show you some ongoing examples on our test system in MDP group uh, to see how all those information that we cover uh, are reflected on the system itself. So first of all, what labor management is, is that labor management allows business partners to manage and make better use of their warehouse resources. By warehouse resources, we mean the human labor, people who work in order to, to, to help us uh, complete our warehouse operations and to complete any other activity inside the warehouse. One of the biggest cost factors in a warehouse is human labor and using labor management, we can record, measure, visualize or document the productivity of employees. And thus we help uh, warehouse managers or warehouse responsibles determine the number of employees, uh, required for current workload or required for any planned workload that is going to take uh, some time in the future. Also, using engineered labor standards, labor management functionality helps you evaluate the performance of your warehouse employees 
Thus, you can decide on the bonuses, promotions, or if there are some room to improve, you can decide on which roads or which actions to take care to take about that uh, perform of employee. And then you can, at the end of the day, you can have uh, bonus payments using uh, other HR systems or SAP's HR modules. Also, labor management enables you to evaluate which activity areas are underperforming, which processes are less efficient, or labor management identifies areas for improvement, like I said, and it provides you the opportunity to reward or change some ongoing operations during the warehouse activities are being processed. When we talk about the benefits, how labor management can be beneficial for your business processes, there are multiple uh, features, but mainly it is highly flexible. It allows for a great deal of customization when recording the metrics. So you can decide to create your extensive customization possibilities and using engineered labor standards or SAP BRF Plus and with additional business add-ins, you can have better customer requirements and better uh, evaluation of your current workload in any specific timeline. And you can also plan ahead using labor management uh, because one of the main problem it solves is planning. So both long and short term planning are possible using labor management. Uh, labor management uses different methods to obtain the desired results, but you not only get an estimate of the duration of the tasks, but you can run simulations without actually uh, processing that task. So you can use pre-processing and planning functionalities using formulas under specific conditions, thus without actually uh, executing the task you can simulate and plan the uh, time cost or the actual cost that will end up at the end of the day and not only it does not only help planning but it also it's also a great tool for the evaluation and reporting when it comes to the workload uh, evaluation so to continuously improve efficiency it's essential that you evaluate your work that is completed. So with labor management, you can again customize highly, you can have highly customizable metrics. And thus from a central warehouse monitor, you can evaluate the results, you can evaluate the employees' performance, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And the licensing part, it is available as a component of advanced version of extended warehouse management. So if you are using advanced uh, as extended warehouse management, why not use the labor management functionality? It does not require additional license. Thus, it will not end up any additional costs to your business. Also, the only thing you have to do is to have some master data created for labor management and it should be activated for uh, warehouse number level. So the warehouse number level activation is a must because whenever a business partner here on labor management functionality, they are defined as processors. Whenever processors are executing a task, this can be a direct task, an indirect task, we are going to be talking about shortly. So you need to track, you need to uh, enter the start and completion times so that the system can uh, evaluate or can report or can plan the required amount of time or effort to you, to you on warehouse management monitor. So after labor management is activated, Certain pro uh, processing transactions require that, like I mentioned, a processor start time and end time. In addition to the already provided EWM data, you can enter labor management master data. This can be the processor uh, as a business partner, 
uh, which has its own ID, its own address, its own efficiency rate, etc., on the system. So if the processor uses RF, radio frequency, then they are linked to their processor number through the system. And when they execute a warehouse order, the start date and time are automatically recorded. And this process can also be completed manually by the worker themselves. And when the warehouse order is confirmed, then the end date and time are locked. Also, labor management is a great tool to control your shifts, your processor's shifts, assign shift leads, and use the shifts to, uh, to define the work schedule working in a warehouse. So you can assign breaks, a shift factor, or uh, like whatever the thing is that reduces the productivity of the working time of the shift, you can have the shift sequence, et cetera, et cetera, defined in the system. And one of the uh, most efficient features of labor management functionality is that it can work with other HR modules, SAP or non-SAP, quite easily. And thus, you can actually have better uh, evaluation of your warehouse uh, employees and at the end of the day you will have maximized efficiency whatever the activity that you are using and you can use shifts to determine the productive labor capacity at a certain point of time in the warehouse so you don't need to uh, wait for something but also the shifts can run in the cycle so you can arrange a shift weekly and at the beginning of each week, the system can restart that uh, relevant work schedule. And when I mentioned the direct labor and I indirect labor, so there are three basic types of labor time in labor management. So direct labor is any activity that is let me say warehouse relevant, warehouse activity relevant. This can be a picking in your goods issue processes or this can be a put away activity in your goods receipt process or any internal movements like inventory counting or replenishment anything that you capture in ewm and there are some documents like warehouse order pi documents uh, value-added service orders so on so if you have the documents on ewm site and the activity is a warehouse relevant activity, then this is uh, defined as the direct labor. And direct labor can, can be followed using engineered labor standards formulas to calculate the time, effort, and the efficiency at the end of the activity. On the other hand, we have the indirect labor, which can be captured for activities that are not connected to a standard warehouse activity. So this can be anything like cleaning, like uh, ad hoc meetings or sweeping the floor, anything that the warehouse supervisor or responsible can define in the system as an external step can also be followed and can also be tracked using labor management functionality. And time and attendance, like clock in, clock out, if you are using an external system for your entrance and leaving of the office, let's say, you can also connect it to the EWM, uh, uh, to the labor management, and you can have data flow from the external system or directly in the EWM itself. Also, Using a warehouse management monitor, we can display all those features that we talked about. So this is what makes uh, labor management and extended warehouse management work efficiently together and maximize your performance evaluation or uh, time travel time, time uh, cost calculations activities. So warehouse management monitor can be used to perform mass maintenance of processors, 
and to display labor management relevant information like the direct and direct tasks that we talked about and if the like i would like to repeat this again so in order to see in order to display or in order to uh, get this data you need to activate labor management on your warehouse number level so i will be showing you the examples in the system after the presentation so if labor management is activated then these additional nodes like plant workload executive workload labor utilization etc etc are available in your warehouse management monitor so the plant workload reflects the work that is expected in the warehouse so if it is a direct uh, labor activity which means for example let's say a stock removal activity you need to have a open warehouse order which is not yet completed which is still to be processed because uh, after we complete that ver ver uh, warehouse order then it will the data will go to the executed workload where then we can compare the ex uh, expected, the planned work, workload, the planned work time, and the actual completion time, and the ratio, the efficiency of that specific activity by, the, by any specific warehouse employee. So remember, we have the processors. So if for your warehouse number, the labor management is active, for the relevant activities, you must enter the uh, processor so that after the uh, reporting is complete, we can see who completed which activity under what time, in which efficiency, etc., etc. So the purpose can vary, but the tools and the formulas can be customized in accordance to your business requirements. Under labor utilization part, we see an aggregated view of the executive workload. So here we can see the efficiency uh, to evaluate the performance of the uh, employees. Under indirect labor task, like defined, we can display the non-warehouse relevant activities. For example, cleaning, sweeping the floor, if someone completed such indirect labor activities, they can also be uh, displayed on the warehouse management monitor. And we, are, we have been talking about some formulas, we have been talking about some uh, time calculations, etc. But how does labor management achieve this is that there are two possible ways. Uh, it uses engineered labor standards or BRF plus. And in this case, I would like to go into detail on engineered labor standards. So engineered labor standards, ELS, are used to define the times that are required to execute an activity in the warehouse. So this activity can be defined custom uh, on custom by the uh, users. So this can be some external steps that are connected to internal standard steps like a picking activity with labor management, but at the end of the day, they need to be mapped to the internal step, which is pick that is standard by SAP. So the system calculates the engineer labor standards when you are creating a document or when you are confirming a document, for example, uh, you are confirming a warehouse order for picking. And after you confirm, the system generates the executive workload. And these labor standards in the plant workload are uh, saved as plant duration. And in the executive workload, we have the adjusted plant duration, which in time, the system, by uh, observing the completion time of certain activities uh, by observing the speed of the resource, the last position of the resource, or the travel distance that is allowed for the resource, and then actually adjust your plan time here, uh, plan time on the 
plant workload node in the warehouse management monitor. Here, you can see on the screen that you can define each step in each time, like how much time it takes using also the travel time calculation, and thus you will end up with a total plant time for an activity. But of course, in real life, we cannot uh, estimate it 100% correctly. So at the end of the day, the real execution time will be displayed after the confirmation of the warehouse task, after the uh, completion of the process under executed workload. And the system uses formulas, conditions, and planning functionalities in order to calculate or when to or to decide when to calculate those uh, engineer labor standards. So right now on the screen, you see some uh, transactions that we can use in order to create some formulas and some conditions so that we can decide when a formula may or can be used and without even completing or executing the real task, how can we plan or simulate the relevant activity? So this was all for the presentation part. Now, let me log on to the SAP test system and I would like to show you some pre-completed uh, direct and indirect activities in a warehouse number that has the labor management activated. So about the presentation, labor management or any other topic, please feel free to reach out to us here on logistics at MDP group. We would love to hear your feedback, questions, or any ideas that is relevant to any logistics module in EWM. So right now, give me a minute so that I can log on to the system. So right now, as you can see in the system, we have got the uh, let me directly go to the extended warehouse management monitor to show you a warehouse number that has the labor management active. For this, I'm going to use my own test warehouse number AE01. Here, under labor management tab that we defined, let me start with an example of an indirect labor task. I'm going to search for it. And here, as you can see, I have got two indirect labor activities that have been completed, that have the status complete, and I display who, which processor completed it. Here, the name, Ali Aranöster, it was defined by myself for test purposes. So I can see the indirect labor, labor task document here also, Another great opportunity for managing or evaluating your warehouse employees is that you can create some notes for the specific uh, warehouse activity, indirect labor activity. For example, first cleaning activity was done without any notes uh, created, but the second indirect labor task is created with the note that cleaning wasn't done nicely, maybe there was some problem. Or you can also add some positive messages so that you can promote or you can encourage your warehouse employees. And we talked about planned and executed workloads. So let me show you the planned workloads. Uh, here, we will only see some, uh, some steps that have the open warehouse orders because these are planned. We don't know if they are completed or not. And they are using some formulas conditions to calculate. After we confirm these warehouse tasks, 
or warehouse orders, then they will be displayed here in the executive workload. Let me just search for the time period that we have our, we had our tests. So as you can see, I can see all labor management relevant activities that are completed or could not be completed because of some errors. And the important points here I'd like to uh, make use is that, let me shorten my uh, options here. So as you can see, the important thing is here, I will be see the, I'll be seeing the time difference with the plant duration and the travel distance. Everything is calculated by the system and the actual duration is completed here, etc., etc. Or I can have another without an error. So let me choose maybe this one without the errors. If I go and set filter here, I should be seeing the actual execution duration. So for example, for this specific activity, picking with labor management, I had 15 minutes planned duration time. So I expected my employee, my processor, to complete this activity in 15 minutes. However, the start time is 16 past five and the end time is 18 past five. So it is just, it's, it has been completed in just 1.2 minutes. So the system by having the ratio of the completion time and the plant, actual plant time, the system shows me the efficiency, the differences and uh, actually if this, uh, occasion repeats itself, then the system can calculate, even uh, can adjust the uh, planning, the plant and engineer labor standards again. So we have been talking about some transactions. Let me briefly show you the transactions as well as the final part. So under LMFE, I can define certain formulas using many parameters that is uh, offered by standard or I can also customize it. So here it has, it's been using a very simple uh, formula that is weight divided by two plus five. So which shows you the, uh, at the end of the day, it will create the plant duration time for it. and the units for weight, the units for length and time can be changed here. So when I say weight here, it is using kilograms. And at the end of the day, it will be giving me a time unit with minutes when it comes to the planning or simulation part. And we can also go to the LMCE transaction and here, we will be specifying when to use those formulas. For example, the formula that I've just talked about can be used here only if the weight is higher than 19. So if the products are, uh, are not ha heavier than 20 or 19 kilograms, then the formula will not be used or for the pre-processing, for the planning and simulation again, we can have only under this condition, only if the warehouse number is AE01 and the product is EWM S402, the formula can work. So you can have, like I say, labor management is a quite flexible tool and you can customize almost anything in accordance to your planning or evaluation requirements about your workforce, about your human labor, or about your warehouse operations. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us on logistics at mdpgroup.com. We will be happy to share and learn from you, share some information with you. 
So we are looking forward to the upcoming webinars. Please stay tuned. Thank you. Have a great day.